I'd like to uh, discuss the uh, legislation currently under consideration here, uh, but I want to begin by briefly discussing how we arrived uh, at this point. Uh, in January, I was one of a few on our side of the aisle to vote to begin debate on the unemployment insurance extension bill. I said at the time, and I still believe today, that the Senate should have a full and open debate on this important issue, as well as a number of others, a debate that includes consideration of modifications and changes to the program. Uh, the President, after all, in announcing um, his uh, position on extending unemployment benefits, said that the program needs uh, reforms. And this is an opportunity to Im uh, implement those reforms. Uh, members on both sides of the aisle, both Republicans and Democrats, have acknowledged uh, the need for reforms. And so my uh, vote to consider this legislation early uh, on when it came up was, was not about supporting or opposing uh, extending the emergency unemployment insurance program, but it was about initiating a debate on this important topic and setting the stage for both sides to work together, to find a credible way of paying for this extension if it was granted, or, uh, and, excuse me, uh, and um, responsible reforms in terms of amending uh, or changing uh, the current law so that we could avoid some of the duplication and some of the uh, misuse of the funds that go into this particular uh, program. So those two things, responsible pay for and measures to reform the program were critical. And I felt that's the debate we needed. And in fact, uh, we did have that discussion uh, in a bipartisan way, back and forth, uh, with a caucus here on our side of the aisle and a caucus on the other side. Now, uh, it's clear that um, we've gotten to the point where not all of us are happy with the result that came forward. I see my colleague from Nevada, Senator Heller, on the floor. No one could have been a better leader in terms of uh, pulling the group together, uh, working to find a sensible solution to this, and I commend him uh, for the efforts that he has made. However, my disappointment is added to the disappointment of this Congress in not having the ability uh, to uh, offer your amendments when the bill comes to the floor. But once again, being shut down by the majority leader, simply saying, I'm going to use Senate procedures, some of them arcane procedures, to deny opposition any opportunity to bring their ideas, their thoughts, their amendments uh, to the process. Throughout the discussion that we've had with our colleagues across the aisle in time to form a consensus in bringing the bill forward. Some of us were disappointed that those issues, that items that we offered, that we thought were uh, reasonable, uh, were not included in the final version. Uh, not everything, you don't always get everything that you want, but nevertheless, you were, at least around here, you used to be able to go down to the floor and say, I want to give my colleagues a shot at hearing what my amendment uh, tries to accomplish and putting it to a vote. And if you win, you win, you lose, you lose, and in the end, you look at the total package as amended, or at least as attempted to be amended, and make a decision. Do I want to support this or not support this? And that's the position that we were in. And I had two what I thought were reasonable requests. One, um, is, was prohibiting the simultaneous collection of Social Security disability insurance and receiving unemployment insurance. Look, the law is basic and it's common sense. If you are eligible to receive unemployment benefits, you have to assert um, uh, and have to be determined as someone capable of uh, uh, of receiving uh, suitable work that is provided uh, by the state. If uh, I had an amendment to uh, uh, incorporate uh, this uh, proposal uh, into the uh, language of the, the final bill that is going to be 
before it. The amendment, the language is identical to the language previously proposed by Senate Democrats that would offset Social Security disability benefits by the amount of unemployment insurance received. So as I said, by law, a person has to be able to work to qualify for unemployment benefits. Yet some of the, we've, as we've found, some people claiming those benefits also are claiming Social Security disability benefits. The law provides that in order to claim disability payments, you have to prove that you're not capable of working, that there are medical basis, medical reasons why you can't work. But here we have documented by agencies of the government that people are getting checks for both programs. All we were trying to do, all I was trying to do, uh, was uh, put forth a provision saying you can't do both. You either are able to work or you're not able to work. If you're not able to work, you, are, you can qualify for disability payment. But if you are able to work, you need to accept uh, uh, the work that is provided, uh, but you can't do both. Now, while some adjustments have been made, there still are uh, several billions of dollars that it costs the taxpayer for the duplication of this. And secondly, I offered a provision that gave the states the flexibility um, to uh, make decisions as to how people would qualify for these benefits. I hear frustration from employers all across Indiana that are basically being told by people who are uh, looking for work, I'd rather keep collecting unemployment when, uh, uh, rather than the job that you are offering to me. And in this time of uh, uh, slow economic growth uh, and uh, coming out of the recession uh, very, very slowly, um, uh, some people, uh, as has been documented by many, many employers to me across the state of Indiana, are basically saying um, people would rather collect the benefits. So we put in what was called a suitability uh, provision um, that people who uh, uh, that would prohibit individuals from receiving emergency unemployment compensation if they accept, uh, fail to accept any offer of suitable work. And that is defined, defined as work within their capabilities, or if they refuse to apply for suitable work referred to them by the state employment agency. Unfortunately, that, was not, uh, that proposal was discussed, debated. People thought it was a pretty good idea. I thought we had bipartisan support, but in the end, it was not incorporated. Instead, they said, well, let's, let's study this. It's been studied. It's been documented. We don't need to study. A study is a way for, let's take this decision out of the process, and uh, it'll put it down some dark, deep hole, and maybe some study will come out later on, and then they'll find another reason not to support it. So uh, bottom line is that the, the two amendments that I had hoped would be part of this final package have been uh, not incorporated. Uh, I understand the back and forth. What I'm asking for, what I have been asking for now, is the opportunity to bring those two proposals forward, debate it on this floor, call for a vote. I'm not going to filibuster it. I'm not going to delay it. I'm not going to throw a monkey wrench into the process here. Have a time-limited, straightforward debate and members given the opportunity to vote their yes or vote their no. And then at the end, when all this process has been worked through, as the Senate was designed to do, but under this leadership of Senator, of the current majority leader, not been able to do, once again, once again, the very function, the design of the Senate has been thwarted by the leadership or lack of leadership by the majority leader who simply said, I will use procedural measures to keep you from offering any amendment to this bill. I do appreciate the work that went on behind the scenes to try to come up with a consensus bill. I think that fell short of where I would like to go. I would at least like to have the opportunity as a senator to offer uh, on the floor, an amendment to the bill, and then accept the results, yay or nay. Since both of these things that I have mentioned have had bipartisan support, why are we not allowed to vote for it or against it, however you want to vote? And why are we not allowed to have the opportunity that was to, 
do what the Senate's supposed to do on behalf of the constituents that we all represent. That was the basis for my decision to go forward with this. Um, a lot of people misunderstood that, but it was simply a decision that I made that we ought to return to some form of regular order here. The reason you come to the Senate is to be able to be a participant in fashioning legislation. And our majority leader, Senator Reid, has disallowed that opportunity, meaning essentially robbing the soul of the Senate, the purpose of the Senate, the purpose of senators, turning us into robots, rubber stamping, whatever the majority leader wants us to pass or not pass, telling us that the 200 and some years of tradition of debate and vote in the Senate, the ability to offer an amendment, if you have a disagreement or you think you want to improve the bill, that has been denied us. So once again, here we are back in this same situation because we have one individual here who's made a decision that the minority doesn't count. That senators, even some in the majority, don't count. They don't get to offer amendments either. And we're going to do it his way and not our way, not the way it's been done for more than 200 years. So with that in mind, not even having the ability to bring forward something that I think has bipartisan support, is responsible, will address the reforms that the president called for, has been once again denied. And with that, I simply cannot support going forward with this, even though there are people out there that are legitimately looking for work, making every possible effort, should be able to qualify for an unemployment program, but the most basic of reforms that ought to be debated and voted on and we ought to have the courage to put our yes or our no to it so that people back home know where we stand. That has been denied us yet once again. This is a dysfunctional body led by a dysfunctional leader. And it's not operating as the Constitution has put forth and as the tradition of the Senate has required. Uh, it's a shame. It's a shame on us that we are not even allowing debate and the opportunity to offer reforms even when they have bipartisan support. Mr. President, with that, I yield the floor.